Hello again, so this is my second video with the um, MK2 reloaded board. Today I want to populate the board with the ICs. I have already prepared a little bit. So this is the MK2 board. I have connected here my S-Video along with the sound. And I already attached here an original keyboard so that we later also can type in a few things. And then I got here all my ICs from together three computers that didn't make it. And um, so now we, we can populate this with, um, the, with this great manual. There is in detail written the numbers of the MOS chips that are going into these um, sockets. Mm -hmm. So now we mount here and CIA. They are always have this little part here where they, um, with this little mark that needs to point to where the switch is. So here goes the CIA. I place here another CIA, which I had to get uh, from another computer. I can tell you a little bit about this later on. So, uh, here I already attached the USB cable. We will later see what is up to that cable. So let's leave this here. And here I attached the um, the um, power power um, source that I got uh, together with my reloaded board of the first version. So then here goes the VIC. Oh, this is very interesting. I was I was a long time not sure if this VIC is still working, but it's completely fine. And um, here goes the CPU. Again here with the mark. So, and then we can place either here one thit. This would already be fine, but I already I anyway had um, an additional second sit, so I can place work here with two sits. So now everything is attached, and we can switch it on. An interesting thing is that you have here a, a, a light that uh, would flash if there something was not right. So, for example, if we if we um, switch it off again and we remove, for example, let's say the CPU, or we would enter a CPU that would be corrupt, then we'll get here the flashing showing that something is not right. So let's bring this back again. So, but now here everything is right. The Commodore is completely working. So this is the screen of the reloaded board. And I just want to show you a few things. So this is now full operating. So classical program. Okay, so this is working. Um, now let's switch this off again because this is something where where I, that I came across that was really really strange for me. Now when fir I started the board first, I saw this. Yeah, so here the blue screen. And the reason for this is this sit here, or this CIA, sorry, is broken. So I will, after this video, I will um, uh, dispose this. Um, 
and um, to give you an idea how it also can look so now I place here the correct sit and take this broken sit and place it in the other sit socket um, in this case it looks a little bit even more strange um, then you have these strange pictures here and it's even more strange because with the console using this USB you can make a memory check and then you even see here things moving around so but this has nothing to do with the board itself with the board everything's fine it's just this sit being not correct so now let's place this in back here you see everything's fine and um, so now this is how everything is populated in this board and uh, now you have here this USB and you can connect this to the to your computer so I use the still Windows still not managed to get away from it and um, we will continue now on the console communicating with this board and there I can show you also a few things. I have installed here this TerraTerm um, and in addition if you or when you plug in the, the, the board the first time usually some additional drivers will be installed so this is how it works in Windows. Um, then you need to add here some um, um, configuration so according to as it, it's given in the manual so what I needed to change that it was working was the baud rate to that here the, anything else worked fine with the default configuration as you see it here you will uh, yeah okay so here full screen is better um, so at the beginning you will you will not see anything but anyhow the board is switched off so when you switch the board on it will connect to here and send some data to there and then okay let's press and then you see here now several options and the most important option at the beginning when populating the board is the chipset info then you can see here if every anything is everything is okay or not so you see here it has recognized the wick um, also the two sits um, maybe you have realized that they look a little bit different but they really have the same number I checked it um, so it's just the housing and the CPU and if there's something not working fine you this is the first thing that where you can try to have a look uh, so maybe let's go through it step by step so on the audio configuration you can just can decide if you um, how you want to use your switch your your sits so here's default is standalone the sit on socket one or you can say okay I want to use the sit on socket two standalone or I want to use them in stereo and this is very interesting I want to learn a little bit more about this because I also will learn them here for programming the Commodore 65 um, and this is the main reason also why I entered two sits then um, there is a IEC burst option I don't know in detail what is about this then let's have a looking at the debugging I uh, okay here you can read and write the memory um, then the tests the, the, the chipset info with I we already had this you can configure what the um, the restore key is going to do how, how it should work and when it should uh, be activated um, you can reset to the default settings with the L um, let's have a look at the memory selection okay this is also not where I did the ROM test so okay then you can reset your Commodore by uh, remote um, here are some more stereo set options so here you can configure the um, the memory area 
Um, uh, this is, I think, important for programming the second SID. Um, and then with U, um, you can upload additional ROMs because ROM is now no longer really ROM, it's somewhere in the flash. So you can you can add here some some things. So this is something I also want to do and I will make one additional video only um, when I play around with this. Um, okay, and this is then some also organizing stuff that has to do with uh, sa saving the configuration, and resetting the board. Okay, so this is all I wanted to show um, regarding populating the board with the ICs. So here is the evil broken CIA, I will dispose it now. The next thing I want to do is to put an, uh, an, an self-made ROM on it. So um, I think I will start with a character ROM, it's the most easiest thing to create and you cannot really break something by doing this. And um, So, but this is it for today, so see you in the next video.